Hello everyone. So today in this topic, we are going to discuss about introduction to polar curve and polar coordinate. Now, so far we have actually talked about Cartesian coordinate, which is also known as rectangular coordinate system. So just a brief on it says that we'll have like let's say in two dimension plane we'll have two of the axes which will be perpendicular to each other so that's x axis and y axis and this divides the whole plane into four sections overall now similarly when we talk about polar curve this is basically about measuring the distance of that point from a reference point and its angle from a reference direction. So this polar curve is about measuring the point from a reference point and angle from a reference direction. So this is going to be something like this. Let's say that we have got that reference point as O. So this reference point will be known, named as, so this reference point will be named as the pole for this and the direction in which reference from where we'll be measuring the angle will be actually known as initial line. So we can say that this is initial line and this point O is actually your pole. So let's say we have got a point P somewhere in the plane. So the line joining these pole to P the distance of P from your reference point A will be named as R and the angle which it will be making in the anti-clockwise direction with OQ let's say will be actually theta. So overall we can say that P O so overall we can say that O is the pole and OQ is that reference direction which is initial line. Now this R which is actually the distance of point P from O that is OP length is actually named as radius vector and the angle which is it is making with OQ that is angle POQ equal to theta will actually be the vectorial angle. So overall we can say that point P in the polar curve will be represented in terms of R and theta. Now this distance need not be negative so therefore we can say R is going to be positive and in order to cover the four sections of a plane we can see that theta will be something between 0 to 2 pi as for example let's say since our angle will start from the initial line so once we start making the angle this will reach up to 90 that is pi by 2 then it proceeds further and make an angle of pi that is 180 comes to the third quadrant makes an angle of 270 that is 3 pi by 2 and finally comes back to angle of 2 pi. So this is how the angle is made. So the range for theta will be 0 to 2 pi and R is supposed to be positive. If R is 0 that means the point pole is itself the point P for the case of R being 0. So this is how we can relate the terms in the polar coordinate. Now let us also discuss about the relationship between the Cartesian coordinate and the polar coordinate. So with that, let us say that we have got 
our plane where there is a point P somewhere let's say in the first quadrant now we'll join the point P from the origin as this origin itself can be considered as the pole and the x-axis will actually be considered as the initial line so this x-axis is actually the initial line the pole is actually the origin so we can see that for point P let's say it is having x and y coordinates in the rectangular form and let's say it is r and theta in the polar form so that means OP needs to be equal to r and the angle PO let's say this is Q needs to be theta therefore if we drop a perpendicular here then in this right angle triangle let's say PO R or maybe you can take some other point let's say N so in triangle N O P O N for this right angle triangle with angle P O N to be theta we can say that O N over O P should be actually cos of theta and this O N is actually nothing but R so with that we can say that O N let's say that is going to be of course the X measure and P N is going to be the Y measure so with that we can say O N that is X will be O P which is R times of cos of theta similarly we will have P N by O P to be sine of theta as we can see P N is opposite to the angle theta whereas O N is adjacent to the angle theta so again as P N will be Y we can say that we are going to get Y equal to R sine theta so with this we can say overall X is R cos theta and Y is R sine theta now we also know that we can find the distance of OP by distance formula as x square plus y square since we are measuring the distance from the origin so this is going to be r cos theta whole square plus r sin theta whole square so this is actually under root of r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta and since cos square theta plus sin square theta is actually 1 so this is going to be under root of r square which will be simply r as we will only consider the positive value of r so overall we can say that r is actually nothing but under root of x square plus y square also if we divide x by y we are going to have x by y as r cos theta over r sin theta so this gives that x by y is actually cot of theta or overall we can say that y by x is actually tan of theta so with this we'll get the relation theta equal to tan inverse of y by x that means we have got relation between rectangular coordinate and polar coordinate the overall relation is for p x y in rectangular and p r theta in polar we have got r equal to under root of x square plus y square and theta equal to tan inverse of y by x apart from this it will also be evident that r will actually be a function of theta so we can say that r which will be written in terms of function of theta overall we can say that function of r theta will come out to be a constant c and this kind of equation will actually be named as equation of the polar curve or simply polar curve equation of the curve in polar form 
so this was the overall idea about polar curve and polar coordinates i hope you would have understood this thank you